Okay, let's uh, let's uh, use some very sneaky tricks to solve uh, for the percolation threshold for percolation in 2D lattices that are triangular. Okay, so we're going to look at this very simple classic hexagonal lattice thing here. All right, so it's triangular. Um, let's just say percolation means uh, these guys are colored in, right? So these guys are open. So flow would go through here, here, here. So there's nice little um, percolation action going on there, and it's blocked through here. All right, so we're going to do something really naughty and sneaky, which works sometimes. This is from the Ministry of Real Space Renormalization, which is a shadowy uh, group promoting a particular kind of uh, physics technique. All right, so what we do is we'll take blocks like this, and we'll think about the problem again in this way. Okay, so it's this one, and so on, right? <coughs> Happy about this. Um, right. So this would go this way, blah, blah, blah. And that one's not involved, and this will be here, and there'll be this one up here. All right, so we're renormalizing. Now we're going to look at it as a new uh, lattice, right? It's also triangular. And we have to do this statistically. The idea is to replace these groups of three by, you know, on average, an estimate of whether they're open or closed. So, uh, which the idea is, we can do this for triangular lattices. You can try for others. Horrible things will happen. Um, these guys are okay. So if this one's open, uh, but these two are closed, then there's you know, flow, so things can move across this boundary. Uh, this one works, uh, so too will the other three ways of doing this, all right? So we could have this one closed, this one closed, these two open, and um, last one is over here, all right? All right, so there's these three, so there's this one plus this one plus this one, and of course all three of them being um, open for percolation, all right? So you can get movement here in all of these directions. Uh, here we'll get some action in these directions as well. So. The idea is to create a um, a new probability that one of these guys is percolating um, as a function of uh, right. So when does this tri this triangle, this group, we want to create a probability that it is in self percolating, right? So that means it has two or more of them open. So you have to figure that out. So it's this one. So it's the probability of this one. Okay, so we'll do it like this. So it's a probability of this one, plus the probability of this guy, plus the probability of this guy, plus the probability of this guy. All right, so there's a little bit of math action there. All right, so if the chance that this is a, so a, a node is, um, uh, allows flow with probability P, right? That's our base guy. And then the simple thing is, okay, so if, if p equals zero, then you're going to see that this next level, nothing's open. If p equals one, all of them are filled in, so we should get that. So p prime should equal one if p equals one. p prime should equal zero if p equals zero. And so, right, so of course you do this one step, then you do another step, and so on. So it's a, it's a, uh, um, a recursive map. So p prime is some function of p. And what you want to see is the case of find when, um, so you want to check these guys. So let me check that, just so that your everything is working. And you want to check when um, P critical will this, be this guy, PC, right? And this is for P not equal to zero or one. So if this is the case, so you have to find when this is true, right? So set P prime equal to P and solve for that solve this equation, then you'll get the critical probability. That is a hint, right? Okay, that's a pretty good hint. A little bit funny, but, you know, uh, hexagonal lattices are quite spectacular, apart from the whole honeycomb thing. Uh, they appear a lot in nature, and they have lots of nice properties, and we'll talk about them later on in the course. Awesomeness.